I am Greg Hunter. Welcome to USA Watchdog. Today, a brand new guest. Uh, he is a research expert, has 30 years experience in cycles and, and markets, and his name is Charles Nenner. Uh, he uh, has uh, founded or founded uh, uh, the Nenner uh, Research Center in 2001. He has lots of experience, including 10 years with Goldman Sachs. Charles Nenner, thank you for joining us today on USA Watchdog. Nice to be here. Well, listen, first out of the gate, I just I know you're an expert on, on cycles and research on cycles. And I, my first question to you about cycles is there's all this unbelievable manipulation. I mean, the Treasury, uh, the Fed has buying, been buying bonds in QE1, 2, and 3. You've got LIBOR massively manipulated, uh, widely reported in this uh, multi-hundred trillion dollar market. Uh, you've got uh, all this manipulation in the markets. How does that interrupt or how does that affect the timing of cycles? Well, it doesn't. So the only conclusion you can have is that all these things have nothing to do with the way that markets behave. Uh, they are part of the market behavior. Uh, I Sometimes I gave, in the time of Greenspan, I gave an example that they thought Greenspan was kind of a Freudian figure that would take care of everything. But also Greenspan and his guys were part of the market. So it, uh, if it would be so that you could manipulate markets, then we could not predict. And since we're predicting with, uh, with very much success, it proves from that that there's no influence whatsoever. Well, I know you are a highly rated, uh, you're a legendary uh, market forecaster and been doing this a long time through many platforms. Now your own, you know, Nina Research Center. Uh, what do you see coming down the pipe here? Some people say inflation. Some people say deflation. The readers on my channel, I get about a half a million uh, a month, and they're saying they're, that they're confused. Help us with uh, what is coming uh, with uh, the U.S. dollar inflation and or deflation. Well, we're holding on to the deflation scenario. I think we're going into deflation. I still think we're going into a Japan scenario. It doesn't mean that in a couple of years we will not have a superinflation because, as you might know, is there is a, a condensate cycle and interest rates go up 30 years and 30 years down. And if you start counting back, then in two, three, four years, we should go back to the old highs, which was like 18% or so in interest rates. It's also something that the, uh, that the, the uh, governments need. If you look at what Roosevelt did, which was mostly... What Obama did uh, in the 40s and 50s, they only paid uh, back 18% of what they borrowed based on inflation. So everybody in the end wants the inflation, otherwise the deficit is going to be huge. So you think, so you think we have a kind of a two-edged sword here. First, deflation, then inflation coming. Right, but there's going to be a scare of deflation. You know, Europe had only 0.4 inflation. It's almost to the zero line, and if they don't really get the euro down, they're going to have a real problem with deflation. Most, most analysts and most uh, people in financial markets are not too familiar with how to deal with deflation, so it's going to be a big problem. Well, what do you think about what uh, Jim Rogers, famed investor Jim Rogers, recently said that, uh, you know, he's uh, worried telling people to run for the hills. He says that, uh, his quote, run for the hills, he says that, you know, the IMF and the EU are both saying they're going to take money out of your bank accounts. And uh, he says that they're just going to loot these accounts and he doesn't want to have too much money in the accounts. It, are, are bank bail-ins coming overseas and are they coming here to the U.S. as well? It's a big problem what happened to Greece and what happened to Cyprus. There was an example that they can just confiscate your money. And I'm also very worried about it. And I uh, already a couple of years ago, I mentioned that we should start a new crisis in 2014 that ends only in 2020. So God knows what the governments uh, intend to do. I think they should just leave the market alone, but they're not going to do it. So they're going to make things worse. So you think we're going to have a crisis from 2014 to 2020? We're going to have a six-year crisis. Correct. And what happens to what are you telling people to do with their money? I mean, everybody wants to know. Uh, uh, Martin Armstrong, who I just recently interviewed, said, you know, all my clients are saying, asking me one question, which is, what do I do with my my money? So what well, do you tell I, people to do with their money? As you know, I'm Dutch, and Dutch people uh, uh, don't want to lose money. Americans always ask, how do I make money? So in a deflationary period, it's very difficult to make money. Uh, we had an upside target on the S&P of 1895, which was reached. 
and we got that target in March uh, 2009. We went long, so we're totally out of the market. You're totally we out of the stock. Well, hold on, you're totally out of the stock market. You're done. Poof. Totally out of the stock market. Okay, where'd you go? Uh, well, uh, we're getting ready to uh, buy back gold because uh, we got out at 1900 and our major cycle lows in July. The risk on the downside is not more than $100, so we, but we still are holding up and we're going to invest and think the bull market will resume. And what I tell people is it's a very difficult market and although I think that real estate markets will be weak again, I tell my big clients to still buy real estate, rent it out. And okay, so we'll go down for a couple of years, but after 2020, things will be picking up and everything will be okay. So let's go back into to gold, your call on gold. You think that this is pretty much the bottom. That's what kind of what Martin Armstrong said as well. He said, eh, it might go down 100 bucks or it might go down to 900 is what he said, but he didn't think it was, could go down very much. You're saying that you're buying gold here and now. Are you buying futures contracts no, no, no. or physical? No, we uh, we still can go to eleven fifty. Okay. And we can sell bottom only in July. Okay. Uh, gold stocks seem to be uh, down after July still for a couple of weeks. So you don't buy the stocks; you first have to buy gold. You buy uh, the physical it, gold. Yeah, if you're afraid, you can buy physical because a lot of people are afraid for the uh, for the financial system. But it doesn't make a difference if you buy uh, futures or, or or physical or the volatility is pretty low. So. I myself, I'm, I'm loading up on uh, very long-term calls on GLD up to 2016. So it doesn't matter if I'm a couple of weeks off, uh, far out of the money, and I just wait. And then you're also uh, suggesting that people buy physical gold, and should they also buy silver? Uh, I think because of the monetary situation that gold is going to outperform silver. Wow, you're one of the few people who've said that. That a lot of people say that silver will outperform gold because it's the, you know, the crazy, you know, tequila drinking peyote cousin of gold, and it will, you know, have more amplification, higher, higher highs and lower lows. But you're saying gold will do better than silver. Yeah. And you're saying that you should buy physical gold. For, what's, what should the normal person buy? Well, for normal person, not so easy to buy physical gold, so he has to know where to store it. It's if he's, he's afraid for the financial system, then I would buy gold coins or physical gold. As long as the, the, the system is okay, you can go and just play the iShares, the GLD, and you don't have to go in all this mess of trying to get physical gold. If the system goes down, are you worried about certain brokerages going down? I mean, not every brokerage is created equal. I mean, some of them have, you know, 15 or 20 or you know, 20 times, you know, capital, and other than have two or three times capital. I mean, some of these uh, brokerage have a lot of exposure to derivatives. Um, if the system goes down, can't you get your money, you know, MF global in a brokerage? Yes, it's a big problem, but uh, the books are so complicated that uh, it's very hard to find out as an outsider which banks have which derivatives and how much they're in trouble. What, what bank would you be, what, what brokerage would you be using? What do you use? Well, I, I just, you know, I come from Goldman Sachs and I have an idea about Goldman Sachs. I think Goldman Sachs is, is, is still the best broker. And if you want to go to a safe bank, uh, I advise everybody Rabobank. It's a Dutch bank, but they have a lot of banks in the United States and the triple A. And I know they have almost no derivatives and they're very conservative. And that's, this, according to me, the safest bank. And that's uh, that's one of the things you look at derivative exposure, right? That's a big uh, that's a big black mark if they have are loaded up on derivative exposure. Yeah, but there's so many so many different products. So even if you look at the derivatives, who knows what I, other other tricks they're involved in? And it's almost very it's almost impossible even for for accountants to really have a good look of what's what the situation of a firm is. So where do you think the high price, I'm going to go just back just briefly. So what do you think the high price of gold will be between 2014 this year and 2020? Where do you think it's going? Well, our first target is 2100, then 2500, and then we have to see. Then if it breaks that, it could be uh, go, go uh, parabolic. It could go very high. Uh, Jim uh, Rickards, uh, who wrote Currency Wars and also The Death of Money, his latest book, he thinks it's he's in the eight, nine, ten thousand dollar range. Is is that your high yeah. range? It's very possible, but what I don't usually mention these things because I don't want people to mortgage the house and to use the money to go long 
on a speculative thing as gold, expecting it to go to 10,000. So I'll, I go step by step. So I say first we go to 2100, which would already be a nice profit. And then if they would look at our, uh, our website, you know, uh, for a couple of months we give out our research for free because it always proves itself. And then you're up to date and you know exactly what we're, what we're seeing and what we, we're believing in. And then we help people through it. So uh, let me just briefly go back. There's a lot of chatter out there about the dollar being removed as the world's reserve currency. A lot of, lot of chatter on my site and other sites about how they're going to have some kind of a currency event this year. What say you? A couple of years I said that from 2014 late, the dollar is finally going to collapse. As you know, people all have been saying this for the last 15 years. They were right, but timing is our business. And we always said it's going to be the end of 2014. That the, uh, that the dollar is going to collapse at the end of 2014. Yeah. And there's different reasons. Like, say, the, the, the government uh, has loans outstanding very short term. If short term rates only go up half a percent, we're already in trouble. And uh, the, 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 the situation as it's going in the United States is they don't have the power to force a lot on other countries anymore because the United States has decided not to be a power anymore. So then, of course, the dollar goes with it. And you think it collapses by 2014. What does that look like to the man on the street if the dollar collapses this year? Well, if you buy only American stuff, it doesn't make a difference. If you, Of course, the imports are going to be much higher. Uh, oil is going to be much higher. And... Uh, uh, inflation will start uh, start m moving its uh, its tail, and this happens two thousand. That's your that's your forecast. The dollar collapse. Well, that's that's that, that I mean that's a start. So if you look in five years from now, you can see oh it started in two thousand fourteen. Ah, I got it. Okay, that's what John. It's Williams. not that everything happens in the end of two thousand fourteen. It's just the beginning. Like I used to do, uh, I still do cycles of war and peace, and I have been predicting that uh, a big. Uh, uh, the war is in the making starting 2013, and when they asked me, does it start with a bang, I said, no, it starts slowly without us noticing it. But if you look back in 10 years, you'll see that that's when it started. We're going to get to that in just a second. Hold on to your war prediction. But I just want, that's what John Williams uh, at ShadowStats.com also has been predicting. In, in the year 2014, the beginning of hyperinflation, are you saying that, that I guess if the dollar collapses, we'll have some sort of hyperinflation? Yeah, but I don't see it start before 2016. But the beginning of the collapse of the dollar, 2014. Right. Okay. Let's get into the oh, – I want to get into the war cycle, being you're uh, a man of cycles. And, uh, you know, I, the, just some of the latest uh, things. Uh, just this week, uh, Eric Holder announced that he's uh, charging five Chinese military people with, uh, you know, hacking computers and stealing uh, secrets. China has, uh, you know, is hitting back, calling the charges ridiculous, and they've, they've been made them up. And uh, also on top of that, you know, you have China appearing to be massing their forces on the Vietnamese border, a lot of unrest about the South China Sea. Tell us about how this China thing affects, will or may affect the U.S. Well, first of all, I'm not too impressed with these, these, these five hackers because I'm sure the United States does the same. And uh, I was, was not impressed that they asked for uh, Russia to bring back snow because if something would happen like this and the, the, the Americans would have a Russian, you know, they also would send them back. So it's just a political play. The island situation could be a nasty situation. That is really something that's in the making. And the other problem we have is that China is all over the world, especially Africa, buying up all the, uh, all the uh, commodities, and we're not doing anything. So we're going to be very dependent on the situation in a couple of years because we're not moving. Uh, Sam, do you think that we could have a, you were saying that the war cycle begins slowly, and I think the economic war is on with the Ukraine crisis and the sanctions ratcheting up back and forth between the U.S. Uh, so we're, we're, we're witnessing financial war before a real shooting war. Is that what you're, is that what you're predicting? It usually goes hand in hand. There could be big, you know, we have big problems. Uh, the shooting war could start in any place in the world lately. Since uh, the Cold War is finished, a lot of uh, uh, problems and where, where it could start from 
Uh, I still think it will come from the Middle East, uh, the big, uh, the big problem. Oh, if you if you call Syria not the big problem, uh, and seventy thousand people died till now, but there are going to be major problems over there. Yeah, you know, I think it's a hundred and uh, it's a hundred and fifty thousand plus. I think is in the, yeah. so far. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. You, so wait. once uh, once the countries over there go nuclear, then who knows where it's going to stop? And you think the war will go nuclear? Uh, when it starts, and you're, you're predicting it'll start, and when it starts, it'll go nuclear in a hurry? I think, yeah, I think it's it's a big problem. I think the Americans are underestimating what uh, what's going on, and they continue to negotiate. They tried it with Korea. They didn't succeed. It's uh, For me, as a Dutch person, I don't understand why they don't learn from their experiences, and they try to please uh, countries that are trying to, uh, to build up an arsenal. Uh, it's just a major mistake, but that's what the policy is these days. And when do you think this war cycle could be turned, uh, you know, hot, red hot shooting nuclear? Well, I, well you don't immediately like go shooting nuclear, but uh, I think in one year or so we're in big, big trouble. It, within a year? Yeah. So by the, before the end of 2015, we're going to have a hot war somewhere. Yeah, and uh, I have talked to some high, uh, high uh, position people in New York a couple of weeks ago, and they, what they're afraid of is for a nuclear device going off in New York. And when that goes up, we have a big problem because until we find out who did it, I'm sure you know, the Americans already want to hit back, but they don't know exactly who to hit back to. So they have really to be in touch and, and, and watch the, uh, the terror groups because I don't think the countries are going to do it. They're just going to give the stuff to terror groups and say, here, you go, and, and you blow up the, the places. And they'll say, oop, not me. We didn't do this. That was right. like Al-Qaeda or whoever. Yeah. And uh, well, getting down to the end here, um, the, uh, a latest news story. Some of the statistics out. I mean, we had a tenth of a percent growth uh, in the first quarter, uh, down from two point six percent U.S. growth. Um, just uh, just today, they're reporting Caterpillar sales are off thirteen percent in the latest reporting. Uh, what does that tell you about the economy? Well, we also do cycles in economy. According to me, it could still get to three percent till the end of the year. But there are uh, as, as uh, oh wait, wait what could get to three percent GDP oh GDP oh, okay but as the old professor Schumpeter said you got a Euler cycle a kitchen cycle for people who don't know that those are economic cycles uh, that every so many years the economy turns up and down and the problem is we're about to turn down but from a very low level because we didn't get very far in the last upturn so that means we're going to be uh, really in trouble. And that's why I think deflation is the problem. Uh, do you think that the government will react to the deflation by printing tons of money? Will they be forced to buy treasuries? Uh, is that the scenario that you're seeing unfolding beyond the deflation and inflation? Well, as, as you know, as we deal with the cycles that tell us what's going to happen when, and then we have another system that tells us if markets go up and down, how high they go and how low they go, and what, what, what people do is we read in the papers. We don't so much, so much deal with why. We just want to know what's going to happen. That's what we provide for our clients. And the rest they can uh, hear in the media. So I don't have a, a clear opinion about what they can do. And final thing, uh, and this is about the currency. You know, they just announced a big deal with China. And they've been mentioning these big deals. But China and uh, Russia are now totally trading energy uh, outside of the U.S. dollar, uh, it's a, a move away from the U.S. dollar by uh, p at least the BRICS countries and others. Uh, what do you think about this move away from the U.S. dollar? Is, is it a mean thing, or do they do, are they doing it because they have to get away from it because they're afraid of the inflation and the collapse of the dollar, to your point? Right, and also want to show is that they're going to build an alternative block of, of power because the uh, United States is not, uh, not stepping in where it should step in. So they says, well, now there's room for us to uh, to create a new world order. And so you you think that this 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 China Russia deal is just a it's just a, a tip of the iceberg of just moving away from the dollar for a lot of these countries? Yes. All righty, uh, I really appreciate it, Charles Nenner uh, of uh, Nenner uh, Research. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us today on usawatchdog.com. Let me get your name right, Charles Nenner Research Center, and which has been in business since 2001, but your experience goes back three decades. Thank you so much for uh, enlightening us here today on usawatchdog.com. Okay, nice to be with you. I hope you come back.
I will.